So I saw your episode on the Madden curse. Right. And I can't believe that you glossed over the biggest jinx in NFL history. Oh, you mean what Eli did to Brady? And the Giants, with the most improbable win, have won Super Bowl 42. Eli Manning and the Giants have finished off the Patriots for the second time. No, no, I mean the curse of Bobby Lane. Oh, come on, Keegan, you don't think the entire Detroit Lions franchise is actually cursed. What? Of, of course I do. And so does everyone who's ever had a Michigan zip code. It is heads. Detroit's choice is to defend a goal. Oh. Chicago will receive. Well, how about that? We had a head coach that declined getting the football after he won the coin toss in an overtime. Delivers the kick and over in, fighting the win, and it is gone! What a decision, huh? And we hold the record for the shortest overtime loss in NFL history. Murray's kick, fielded by Williams at the five. Williams breaks out of the pack. Dave Williams, touchdown Chicago on the kickoff after overtime. And then we went an entire season without winning a game. By record, they are the worst team in league history. Zero and 16. Maybe the curse of Bobby Lane is real. Are you happy now? I will not be happy until you go to Detroit and crack the case of the curse of Bobby Lane. It's a classic reverse Beverly Hills cop. I get it. That's why we're in Beverly Hills and you're dressed like Axel Foley. Yes. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought you knew that. Why are you dressed like him? I always look like an undercover cop. It's unavoidable. Good afternoon, football fans from Detroit, Michigan, where this afternoon the Browns and the Lions battle it out for the world supremacy of professional football. Bobby Lane was the last person you'd have expected to curse the Lions. Lane's going all the way on this one. He has a man open. It's Jimmy Dorn. He was Detroit's Lion King. Pandemonium breaks loose in Frank Stadium as the game ends with the Detroit Lions successfully defending their title of world champions. You know, it's hard to believe, but the Lions of the 50s were kind of like the Patriots of the 2000s. They were it in the 50s, They right? were it, yeah. I mean, in the 50s, it was pretty much them and the Cleveland Browns back and forth. They won three championships. It's really something else. How many playoff games have the Lions won in your lifetime? In my lifetime, uh, one. That was 30 years ago, in January of 1992. He's gone! Unbelievable! Touchdown, Lions, Barry Sanders! Oh my gosh, what a run! 38 to 6, Lions! And the stars have never aligned for Lions fans like Keegan Michael Key, star of Key and Peel, and Wendell and Wild. So what happened? It's kind of a spiritual situation, because it, it was a curse. It was the curse of Bobby Lane. October 6th, 1958. For Detroit, a day that will live in infamy. Two games into the defense of their third championship in six years, the Lions trade Lane to Pittsburgh for Earl Morrill and two draft picks. Well, it hurt me naturally when I was traded to the Steelers from the Lions. Uh, we had been very successful with Detroit. I really didn't know what to think. I tried what they referred to as a hex. Hex, 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 hex. When they traded Bobby Lane to the Pittsburgh Steelers, he said, I'm the best quarterback in the league. There is no defense when Lane can take his time. And he said, you're going to trade me, you're never going to win another championship. Those words clearly have rung true. Detroit Lions are only four or five plays away from having a terrific season. We've learned Lions running back Barry Sanders will announce his retirement via his representatives. The Lions, I know I've just had some contact with them. They have no comment, but they are clearly stunned by this decision. Calvin's retirement announcement, it's a gut punch in the locker room. It's a gut punch to the franchise. This is a poorly coached team right now. They are not executing at any level. Seven interceptions in the game now. Okay, now we've runs. tied the team record. Dano lost. Oh, he ran out of bounds. That's a safety. How do you run three yards out of the end zone like that and not even know? A zero win season, early retirements, no championships. The curse has lasted more than 60 years.
it wasn't for a lack of stars. This is a man dedicated to defense. Alex Karras strides into the cold backfield and smears John United. From Mongo. Mongo like candy. To Megatron. Oh, Megatron, you did it again. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Finding a place that was special to Detroit's Lion King isn't hard. Just look for an establishment with a liquor license. This is it. How do you know Bobby frequented this place? Because it's a bar in Detroit. Where are you going to park? I will just take Bobby's spot. Are you nuts? Bobby liked to park on the sidewalk, sometimes right in front of the bar. I mean, they let him do that? Bobby Lane won three world championships in this town. He could have parked in the mayor's kitchen. Tiger Stadium's no longer around, so I think if we're going to connect with him, what better place than one of his favorite watering holes? Well, you're probably right about that. <sighs> what was Bobby Lane's favorite drink? Cuddy Sark and water. Sure you can handle that, Peyton? Mm-hmm. Hit you harder than Ray Lewis. Oh, what a hit! Ray Lewis, down goes Frazier. Yeah, I'll take one. You know, Bobby Lane's been retired since 1963, but he still holds a lot of records that will never be broken. Really? Like what? Most passing yards, touchdowns, and completions while legally intoxicated. Bobby Lane wastes no time. He goes gunning for a touchdown and scores a direct hit to Doran Dibble. Right. I mean, the guy was just a party animal. I did have one philosophy on life. When I went out, I went first class, and I went in the front door. I never did uh, sneak in the back door. He just drank and drank and drank, and then would go out there (laughs) and just. (laughs) Bullseye Bobby strikes for his 100th TD pass. Who was it? Art Donovan of the Colt said he hit Bobby, and then he caused the whiff of alcohol that came out of him. <laughs> he said, Bobby, Bobby, you must have had a hell of a night last night. He said, I may have had a few at halftime. And, you know, I wouldn't doubt him. Bobby got arrested for DUI in the courtroom. The judge says, Bobby, what do you have to say to yourself? He goes, I ain't drunk. It's just my Texas accent. <laughs> Not guilty. Gone. Let him off. I want Place that Bobby doesn't waste any time getting airborne if he hits Jim North. And he played quarterback in a little different style. Didn't always look perfect, no super tight spirals. Not like I knew anything about a tight spiral. Wobbly duck going to the end zone and a little underthrown, but Thomas is able to get there. It was a wobbly pass, right? but it got there. I didn't throw the prettiest pass. They kind of used to make fun of me. There's more to being a quarterback than having a strong arm. You can throw it end over end if you score enough touchdown. Lane tosses goalward there. Farmer Jim Duran holds tight for the touchdown. He was the first guy to do Omaha. Omaha! The first guy to get up there and start going, I see something different. Whatever you do. Right, yeah. I mean, where Paul, Paul Brown sent the guard in with a place. piece of paper going, do this. Yeah. Cleveland coach Paul Brown uses his signal calling shuttle system as he sends guard Chuck Knoll into the game with the play. Bobby Lane said, I got this. He and Buddy Parker invented the two minute drill. Maybe he just sobered up. Lane's comeback is a story in itself. Maybe he just played best on a deadline. Bobby Lane on the quarterback sneak, pushes his way across standing up, and the Lions leaps in front. But when time was running out, the Lions quarterback always had Detroit running on all cylinders. Most of your games, most of the action happens two minutes before the half and two minutes before the game's over. Late in the fourth quarter, the Lions launch another aerial bombardment. That's when most of the action happens. And it's these times that you win and lose a professional football game. With 46 seconds left to play, Bobby Lane, the coolest cat in the Lions' den, lifts a perfect lead pass to Cassidy for the winning touchdown. A spectacular 24-point comeback by Detroit. He was a star. Bobby Lane was Tom Brady with more alcohol. Hey, he's peaking for the two-minute drill. Does that take away from what he accomplished? I mean, to me, it adds to it. Unitas must have drank milk. (laughs) He looked like a guy who just drank milk. There's no doubt, and that's why he threw spirals. The party couldn't last forever. 
And in October of 1958, after Bobby arrived at practice intoxicated, the Lions had had enough. They traded Bobby Lane. And that was it? Yes. It really was it. It has to be it. There is a curse. If you take the curse out of there, we have to accept the fact that we're this bad. It's easier for us who are diehard Lions fans to go, there is a curse. And the O in Motown officially stands for O in 16. We hit bottom, and then we hit bottom again, and then we got a hammer out and hit ourselves in the head a few more times, and then we hit bottom again. The Lions right now, they're rebuilding this thing from the studs up. It's always next year. How long have you been saying Down that? <laughs> in the deep darkness of my Lions fan soul, there is hope. <laughs> this is the year, baby! 19-0! Believe it! If and when the Lions can get deep, deep, deep into the playoffs, this place will go nuts. It's been a long time. Bobby Lane never played here, but his, his name's up there. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And over there are the championship banners that oh, Bobby won. yeah. What's the helmet for? Thank you for asking. Tobin's Spirit Guide. The one from Ghostbusters? Correct. It says that you can actually lift a curse by using an object that a person wore. This was Bobby Lane's helmet. Why is it gold? Good question. Half the players had gold helmets, half of them had silver. Oh. That worked. They were winning championships. Hopefully, Tobin's Spirit Guide would work too. Jeff, Keegan, and all of Detroit were counting on it. Why the is there a bathtub in the end zone of Ford Field? Am I on drugs? Trust me, Jeff. Google curse-breaking spell, and you'll come up with this. Fill a tub with 100 cups of water and a cup of salt. Doesn't smell like water. Because it's whiskey. Bobby Lane would have preferred that. If this stuff really works, why didn't you use it to put a hex on the Patriots? Belichick's dark magic was just too strong. Now pour the salt in the whiskey. We're going to salt it. Why don't you just use tequila? Just do it, newsroom. Nice. Now light it on fire. Now what? I'm not going to, what, light? Yes. No. no. This is the problem. This is why the curse won't end. You guys won't go the extra mile. Here, read this mystical incantation instead. In the name of Motown, Eminem, and Ed McMahon. I call upon thee, O creatures of earth and whiskey, cleanse the Detroit Lions of the curse of Bobby Lane and restore the roar of the lion pride to balance and help. So won't it be. Now I have to go to the restroom. And just like that, the curse of Bobby Lane was lifted forever.